Today on Lockdown Red Wings, Pew Suter leads Detroit to victory in a must-win game over the Capitals. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. I almost said Let's Go Red Wings podcast for a second there. Had to do a, a double Let's type. Go Wings, baby. Go Screw wings. the intro. That's, that's a dub. That's, that's where a, the mind's that's at a, that's today. A big time dub. What We're a win. Hosts, <laughs> Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News podcast. Well, Scotty's a freelance journalist for the Detroit News, as well as a host of Lockdown Tigers. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This, uh, make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. And yeah, Scotty, like you were just saying. I don't know how much saying, more you can make that one, baby. <laughs> that I don't a... know if it's possible. That, that, I, this is insane. Like that, that was such a great hockey game start to finish. That was a fantastic win by the Red Wings. I've been doing Locked On Wings for two years now and Locked On Tigers for like a year and a half, almost yes. two years. And Sorry about that second one, by the way. This game, well, that's my point. This game is probably the biggest win I've ever covered across either. Yeah. I. What, you know, what was the biggest win in Wings history since when? Well, and I think we said this on the game, the, uh, the episode the other day, is that this was the biggest game since the last time they were contending for a playoff spot, which was – Real in all reality, 2016, but you know, you could argue maybe 2017 as well as they missed the playoffs that year. But this is the biggest game in six or seven years, without a doubt, yeah. and the biggest win in that span as well. Because Easily. this game, we said it yesterday, had huge playoff implications. And this team came out, lost Dylan Larkin in the first 10 minutes of the game, and then continued to play well, even without their leading point getter. They did what the Washington Capitals couldn't do without their leading point getter. Hugh Suter said, put the team on my back. He said, put the team on my back, baby. <laughs> when I saw that Hugh Suter was going to be the uh, the 1C going forward, I was like, oh, man, I don't know about that. And I know he had done it in the past for both the Blackhawks and the Wings last year during all the injuries, but I just wasn't sure. And, you know, he – Meshed pretty well with David Perron and uh, Tyler Bertuzzi. I was, <laughs> was blown away. He had the weird. game of his life. Because the crazy thing is, is it wasn't even like just offensive. He was a, a, a four checking king. I mean, there was, he was poking pucks left and right, man. He's like he five, nine too, doing that stuff. Right. Like five, he nine. Right. He looked absolutely great. Definitely the Pew Suter game. I love it. Yeah, without a doubt. And so the Red Wings now are fourth in the wild card race. Their winning percentage is 554. Their goal differential, for those who care about that, is just minus five now. Remember, two years ago, guys, their plus minus, their team goal differential was negative 110. So quite a long ways to come since then. And, you know, you surpassed Washington Capitals. You're tied for points, but by win percentage, you have the lead on them now. And you just continue to climb. The Buffalo Sabres, I think that game's over. They got absolutely pumped by the Toronto Maple Leafs. So that's a huge one as they have you beaten uh, points percentage just barely. And now you're just trailing the Pittsburgh Penguins in terms of like points percentage, just trailing that guy, that team. So let's go Red Wings, man. You got a it was, lot of games in game. hand too, especially on the uh, on the teams that are like in place and actually in the wild card. You got, you got a lot of games in hand on some of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Islanders uh, have played 60 and the Florida Panthers have played 60, which is why they're first and second right now. I mean, again, if you were just to sort that by points percentage, you would be sitting third rather than fourth in uh, the wild card race right now. And you just just barely behind, man. You're right there in the thick of things. Who do you want to... What do you want to talk about? We talked about Suter just now. I mean, we could go into more depth about Suter, about how great of a game he had. I mean, one on the fourth line, he continues to click. They scratch Zadina. I wasn't too hot on that. Uh, they put Kubelik on the fourth line with Sunquist, but he just continues to play really well. His shot selection remains really good. Capitalized on a turnover in the third period. Uh, when Honestly, the Capitals brought it to the Red Wings for the first half of that third period, and his goal capitalizing on that turnover was a huge momentum shift because from there on out, the Capitals were deflated. 
So Pew Suter having a two goal game when the team needed depth scoring the most, having lost Dylan Larkin to that uh, five minute major that, that couldn't have come at a bigger time. Absolutely. Yeah. Pew Suter was phenomenal. I guess we can talk about the penalty really quickly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, Oh, she's okay. I mean, clearly it, it's, it's frustrating because of what, well, like when you play the comparison game, that's, that's when it gets frustrating because we've seen, so many cross checks, especially above the shoulders to Larkin over the years that just like flat out haven't been called anything, nonetheless games. But, um, you know, I, like, it, it, I mean, it was, it deserved to be a major and like he, <laughs> he, he cross checked a dude in the teeth. Like that's, that, that, that is a major. And uh, the game surprised me a little bit, admittedly, but I, I didn't think it was like a blasphemous decision, even though it clearly was on accident. He was trying to go for the body and just missed. Um, but th that that's pretty much all I have to say on it. Like, it, and again, like, oh, she's not hurt. So like, we're all good. That's great. And the Red Wings got to win anyway. So all good. Great. Like it, it could have been a lot bigger of a deal to, uh, I think both fan bases and it, it thankfully, for, for a plethora of reasons is, is probably not going to be remembered too, uh, too, too dramatically unless the league comes out tomorrow out of nowhere and like suspends him or something. No, I completely agree with you. And on every single point that you made, if this, the penalty as it stands in a vacuum, I have no issue with, even though it was like a defensive reaction and it was clearly accidental. You could see him kind of like put his hand out like, Oh crap. I, I didn't mean to do that. And then continue for sure. Um, it's because of the fact compounded by the fact that there have been at least two, maybe three of these in Dylan Larkin's career. One ended his season against Jamie Ben. And then just two games ago against Calgary, where he took one to the neck as well, where it was not even, not even a lack of a major penalty. There was no penalty whatsoever. Right. That makes it frustrating because it's Incredible. like, why is Larkin getting called on these? But when it happens against Larkin, it doesn't. Absolutely. Um, no, but, that, that, and see, like, those are two separate things to me. And like, obviously the, the, argument debate whatever fire is going to come out of it when that does happen but uh yeah in like you said in a vacuum i i don't have a pressing issue with the calls that were made it's just it was larkin specifically and when looking back just to calgary what a couple of days ago like you it, it's it's definitely frustrating and that part of it is is absolutely justified and i'm right there with you yeah i don't see any reason why um, he should get a suspension from this. There's I think no reason. I, I yeah. would be that, shocked. Then I would be really fine. angry. Yeah. Then yeah. this would be a much different tone if he ends up getting suspended for sure. But I, I can't imagine that he is agreed. Uh, where do you want to go from here? There's so many good things to talk about in this game that, you know, I'm really, really, really willing to go anywhere with this. I want to talk. Well, we've done Suter. We've done Larkin. I want to talk. I want to talk Billy Huso. That's fair. Fantastic. Had... Fantastic. And I guess kind of piggybacking off of off of Huso's performance as well, I want to talk about the defense because <laughs> I thought that for like 48 minutes, the defense was some of the best it's looked literally all season. And I get like a lot of heat for like, oh, like even in wins, like he's got to bring up the defense sucks, whatever. This I, I, genuinely, you know, the last whatever, 10 minutes of the game, maybe closer to 15, they kind of let up a lot and you had a two goal lead and, and whatever, but the, the last 10 to, to 12 for sure, uh, was definitely a little shaky defensively. And, and, and I thought that they definitely got outplayed in that, but we're not focusing on that for the first 50. I thought the defense was, I, I mean, genuinely some of the best it's looked all season. I was unbelievably impressed. And then Huso made timely saves. He made big saves. And especially then, again, when the defense did kind of let up uh, on the gas and did kind of struggle there at the end of the game, Huso was was him and and just kind of had a had a had a big dog performance there. So definitely shout out to to Billy Huso. But in the same conversation, I'm I'm very proud of uh, of like five sixths of our defensive performance. No, absolutely. And what's crazy too is this Red Wings defense as a whole, including the Fords as well, but defending the Red Wings had 28 blocked shots in this game. And Billy Huso back are bouncing back phenomenally from a rocky start in Seattle, had a goal saved above expected of 2.09.
So if it weren't for Vili Husso, if you had a league average goalie in that, this would have been a tied game going into overtime. But Vili Husso made some huge saves. And I think what impressed me most about the defense wasn't the block shots, which they had a lot of. And it wasn't the fact that they didn't give up quality scoring chances because they did, especially in the third. I thought they gave up a lot of quality first attempts. And I put the emphasis on the first attempts because I thought the defense did a great job at clearing away rebounds and tying up the guy in front of the net so they couldn't bang away at Huso. They let Huso make the big, important first save, but they did their job and took the rebound chances away and a lot of opportunities. I, w- I can count on one hand how many rebound opportunities the Capitals actually had on Billy Huso, and that's normally where they get killed is those rebound chances where no one is there to stop the guy from just hacking away at Billy. Absolutely. hundred percent. And uh, again, like I, I, I don't know if we can do the heat map, I guess, like after the break or whatever, but I, this was a, a really good, again, a, until the very end of the game, I was very, very impressed with this defensive performance. And, and like you said, I thought they, they really kept shots at distance and, and didn't let kind of what we, the, the issue we've talked about all year where people were just kind of able to get into the slot with ease. And, and that was, for 45, 50 minutes, very much not a thing, which I was very impressed with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. I'll throw up that heat map that Scotty is so eager to see. Uh, but first, I got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. It's the midway point of the NBA season, and now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel app, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Scotty, you know it's going to be a banger of an episode when I don't stumble my way through an ad read. That's how you know we are on point as well. That's when you know. That's when you know. Uh, Here's that heat map that you are so eager to see. And, you know, and it's going to look, I'll warn you, it looks pretty even. Um, And that is, again, because the third period, the Capitals really hammered away at the Red Wings for the first half of that third until the Suter goal. But the fact that it's even in itself is kind of a good thing. Because there are a lot of games where the Red Wings have won in recent memory where the heat map does not look even because they got all their goals on special teams and this heat map represents the five on five. So for the fact that these two teams that are both contending for wild card spots have even heat maps kind of shows you that the Red Wings are well within their rights to be in that hunt. Absolutely. 100%. I I mean, the most impressive thing I kind of said it before the break there and you just kind of reiterated as well but just the the amount of pressure they were able to push away defensively I I thought was so impressive and and again like broken record there at the end of the game they slipped a little bit in that regard but really really impressive from I'm like highlighting and circling areas with my mouse and I'm just not realizing no one can see what I'm circling but I'm I'm um, really impressive you know, like in the left circle, just a lot of kind of one timers, not a lot of consistent success. And then uh, kind of like near the blue line too, just a lot of just trying to get shots on net. They had a really, the caps had a really low shot total up until the third period. I mean, yeah. at one point, like deep into the second, it was like 12 or 13 shots on the night for, for Washington. Fact. I mean, it, it was, it, it really was a, they had a 12 very, shots. The first two. Yeah, there you go. Like such a sound performance by this defense uh, up until the end of the game. I was, I was so, so, so pleased. And and then once they got up to a multi-goal lead there at, at the end, who so just kind of put the team on his back. So great. You can see, see, you can see here too, that the Red Wings early in the game took a good chunk of the court, the shot attempts, and then they carried that. It was pretty much an even battle all the way until the third. And then you can see here, the Capitals really took it to the Red Wings all the way until the end. And you know, that suitor goal, you can see it kind of flatlined a little bit. Because that that was really deflating for them. So overall, man, you know this is a this is a great game when the team needed it most. I literally cannot complain one bit with how this team performed in this one. Um, other like guys, we got to you know give shout out to. I thought Jake Wallman had a fan freaking tastic game. Unreal, 
I, um, I, I think there's the a legitimate arg- I think there's a legitimate argument that that even with a, as great as Suter was, that Wallman was the best player on the ice tonight. Yes, I thought absolutely. Was, I, I thought he was stellar. Uh, drew a penalty there. That was kind of crazy. Dude, <laughs> I don't Tom, know. Tom Wilson. Man. I don't know I don't what know Tom what Wilson was doing on that one, man. That, that was a wild sequence there for a little bit. But um, yeah, I, I thought Jake Wallman was was <laughs> fantastic. Uh, he also he had a. He, he had a crossbar in this one, didn't he? He did. He had a post right at the end of the second. Dude. Yeah, where like he could have, and and he had a, several shots on net. He was great defensively. Uh, I was I was blown away by how good he looked. I just while you were talking, I was like, I'm gonna peek at the hockey stat card. Are you ready for this? I'm so ready, Brian. I don't think you are. I don't I, think anyone could be ready. How ready I am for this hockey stat card? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look at the top. It's like Two over, sooner, baby. And over, Robert Hag. Let's go. Dude, Robert Hag, who, by the way, it is confirmed that if we call for a player to be scratched or waived, they are going to go out the next night and score a goal. Boom. Just instant. Instantaneous. No, nah, this is wild, dude. This, this is, is wild. Robert Hag, man, shout out Robert Hag, man. That, that was uh, obviously the, the, the first goal of the night. And uh, on top of that, I mean, obviously the, the stat card right there kind of backs it up, but uh, I thought that he more than held his own defensively. I was just, uh, this is the most impressed I have been with like every defenseman on an individual level in like months. I feel like I, I thought Wallman was great. Cider was fantastic and was really physical, which we needed because early mm-hmm. on in the game, Washington was kind of being physical towards you. Hag obviously had a great game. Uh, I, I didn't think Ben Sherratt was, was bad. I know that people love to dog on him. Uh, Oli Mata had a couple of really nice runs, honestly, and 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 was great. Like, I, I was I, I was very very impressed with uh, w- with really the defense across the board, especially again for for the first fifty minutes. There, just so those listening at home and aren't watching on YouTube, there were eight Red Wings who contributed nothing but one hundred percent positive game score in offense, defense, production, and miscellaneous in this game, according to Dom from the Athletics um, model. Now, I mean, you know, all these models are slightly different and represent slightly different things, but that is, uh, I, I don't think you can misalign your entire team providing positively in a, in a single hockey game. That was, uh, that was something to behold just there. Uh, Scotty, Jacob Vrana, first game back uh, yep. since October with the Red Wings, finally got in the lineup. You know, I thought there were a couple moments where he uh, miscued there was a, he had a turnover. Where he meant to do like one of those redirect breakout passes, just turn it over. Uh, he whiffed on a shot in the offensive zone. But outside of that, I thought he had a great game for his first game back. He was clearly motivated. He back checked hard, which mm-hmm. that was the biggest criticism against Jacob Rana was that he didn't play a two way game. Well, he clearly felt motivated to play a two way game in this God. one. He back checked very hard and he created opportunities and had opportunities as well. And I believe he was on the ice for Pew Suter's second goal. I don't think he got an assist on it, but I think he was a plus one in this game. So just absolutely, I was super pumped to see him out there and performing quite well. A little annoyed that Zadina was the one who ended up getting scratched because, you know, again, I'm biased. I know I'm heavily biased towards Zadina, but I thought he's been playing well lately on the fourth line. Um, but Verona came in and more than held his own, and I hope he's war- earned himself a second consecutive game in New York. I completely agree. I, I thought that... Verana, there was one shift that I thought was rough very early in the game. I think it was the shift that he got checked in when he tried to skate. Into oh the yeah, he got that laid out. Bad. That whole shift, honestly, I thought that that uh, I was kind of nervous about like how the rest of the game would look because I, I didn't think that shift was very good. And then pretty much the rest of the game, I was very impressed. As you said, the biggest takeaway, more so than anything he did on offense, was how aggressive he was. Uh, on the back check defensively. And so that was amazing. And I honestly, outside of maybe if he put a puck in the back of the net, I'm not sure I could have been too much happier about how he looked in this one. And I also hope that he plays again. I hope that it's not at the expense of Zadina to your point. I, I, I thought that that logic was a little weird on uh, that, that news he said for, you know, why he was putting in Verona over Zadina and why Zadina was the odd man out. But uh, I, I would like to see both of them in the lineup together, uh, ideally. But 
I mean, you're certainly not taking out Pew Suter, let me tell you. So uh, you're going to have some some decisions to be made on Thursday. But that's a problem we can discuss tomorrow. For now, we're just going to be pumped about the win. And, and yes, I, I, to, to summarize, I was very pleased with how Verona looked as well. Absolutely. As you would be pleased if you got Tita a subscription. To, no, if you got a subscription to AG1. Our, this next product that, that's is, also true though yes this is also true the partner this next partner is a product you got to use literally every day start taking ag1 because with one delicious scoop of ag1 you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food sourced superfoods probiotics and adaptogens to help you start your day right the special blend of ingredients supports your gut health your nervous system your immune system your energy recovery focus and aging all of those things. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost him $100 a day. Athletic Greens, guys, it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit of yours. And it's got 7,000 five-star reviews so right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with daily convenient nutrition it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash nhl network again that is athleticgreens.com slash nhl network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Segment three, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Let's clean up the rest of this conversation. Scotty, who else we got to talk about here? Oh, uh, Fabry blocked a shot, it looked like, in the third and left the ice limping. We're praying to God right now that it's not his knee. In fact, let me check right now because see if anyone has tweeted about his post-game status it at least confirmed that it's not the knee please if twitter would load have you been having issue where twitter just doesn't load when you load it up you have to refresh every single time i'm not going to talk about my issues with twitter that's probably <laughs> probably wise right now um yeah, two-factor so two author- authorization guys super cool um too bad you can't have it anymore uh, i'm not seeing anything about Fabry right now, so we're just going to continue to hope that he... I haven't gotten a notification on anything. And yeah, I, that I it's, have, so. it's not knee-related. If he tore, tears a ACL for the fourth time, man, I, I don't know what you do with him. That'd, That'd be, be crazy. kind of crazy on a play like that to yeah, come to that not, outcome. But Normally non-contact stuff with those kind right, of Right, yeah. That's not... I don't know if that's really a correlation, but we are obviously hoping for the best regardless. We literally just now... Finally, like with Verona back, uh, like we are officially the, the fully healthy team that we expected to be. Like the actual roster we expected on opening night is finally assembled. And it would be brutal if right when that happened, we, we lost somebody. Yeah, not counting Mark Pissick, obviously, because... For sure, yeah. Yeah, he's gone, gone. Uh, that poor one-year deal. Bro. Anyways... Uh, power play unsuccessful in this game. You know, and I know the penalty kill technically went two for three, but one was a five minute uh-huh. major. I kind of count that as a success in a lot of ways. And they got a shorthander and the shorthander on that as well. Pew yeah, that neutral. one doesn't count. What are we talking about? They, 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 they went net neutral on that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a loss in my eyes. Absolutely. So, I mean, this game is just so huge and now the schedule is going to, you're coming back home finally, which is going to be huge for the Red Wings, but you're playing the New York Rangers who are, well, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And that's saying a lot because the Eastern Conference is far better than the Western Conference. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but there's only two teams in the entirety of the Eastern Conference that has a losing record to the Western Conference. Yeah. And that is, what, Ottawa and Montreal? Like, this team is, it, it's going to be a gauntlet. Like we said earlier, this they have the second toughest schedule remaining remaining struggled yep. through that sentence but it, it was got, got it, there i don't know if it's like to date or, or whatever but i know that it was post all-star break it, it's it was the hardest schedule in hockey yeah yeah so i mean new york rangers right now have 75 points 33 wins and we'll obviously preview them properly tomorrow but you got to keep the momentum going man right now you you just won Four out of five games on the road, which is huge. One of which against the team you're chasing in the playoff race. You got to keep the momentum up. Like you're in a position where I know you have games in hands 
games in hand on the teams ahead of you, but there are teams behind you that have games in hand. Buffalo Sabres have a game in hand on you, and you know they already have a better point percentage than you. So you you absolutely cannot let up. You have to continue to perform night in and night out if you want to make the wild card because this wild card race is going to be a tight one down to the wire, and you're going to be facing teams. That's a, another thing too, as we haven't mentioned, is the other teams competing for a wild card right now are teams that have a, a plethora of playoff experience. The Islanders made the Eastern Conference final, what, two years ago. You had the Florida Panthers, who were the President's Trophy winners, got bounced in the second round last year. The Pittsburgh Penguins have been in it every single year. The Washington Capitals, in it every single year. I mean, outside of that, you know, Buffalo's the only other team that you're really racing with that isn't got playoff experience. You're the two new kids on the block, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just, like you said, we will look ahead a lot more tomorrow and talk about the, the Rangers specifically and whatnot. Oh, I got a piece of yarn on my sleeve. Don't you hate that? Anyway. I uh, with more hair on my body than I do on my head <laughs> because I, I live with a woman yarn. And a cat. It was a piece of yarn. I said no reference to your bald head. Anyway. Persecution complex. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, we'll talk about the future uh, a lot more tomorrow, but I just – putting a bow on this road trip, th this was awesome. Like, this really was awesome. Th this is – that is legitimately one of the most fun, like, week and a halfs of Red Wings hockey in years. And – it completely rejuvenated the fan base. We have expectations now going into every game, which is a little scary. But, and as we talked about yesterday, you know, there's the, you're in a playoff hunt. I, I wish I had my, like my, my baseball eye black that I could put on, like in, you know, we're in the hunt, but it, it's, it's very exciting. It's a little scary. And this past week and a half is is what got us here. Like, not even two weeks ago, we were like, oh, yeah, like, let's talk about, you know, where Burt's going. He's gone at the deadline. Like, this is another sell at, at, the, the, at the deadline type of season. Let's start talking about whatever. And then uh, a West Coast road trip, we come back home, and, and it's a completely different vibe around the team. And so – and even this game specifically, like – you randomly, the schedule makers, had you finish off a West Coast road trip with a road game in D.C. before coming back home. Like, that's that's insanity, to be honest. And they didn't come out flat. The boys were buzzing. They looked good from puck drop. It was a very chippy and physical game, and they hung in there. And, and they got the biggest win of, of the last several seasons. And I'm not trying to throw a parade on Woodward, and I, I'm not trying to say that, that like, even that we're going to make the playoffs, but it's just this last like seven to 10 days has just been so awesome. And I, I cannot wait for the rest of the season, even though I'm a little scared. Listen, man, to be in the hunt is what we ask of this hockey team. And right now they are in the hunt. Yeah. We said last night, like this game, you have got to rise up to the occasion and we thought this team was going to, we, we had faith that this team knowing the circumstances going into this game against the team you were chasing in the playoff standings would make a stand. And they did. And they made a statement and it, it adds to my confidence. You know, this is, I still struggle with the idea of buying in completely because I still know that it's very, especially with that strength of schedule, it is very possible that they don't make the playoffs. I understand that for sure. But you know, with every win over in vital games like this, it makes it it makes it easier to buy into not just not just this win and this season and making the postseason this year, but what Eiserman's cooking overall. So 100%. just just the idea Great that point. it is you can actually and I, I even mentioned this earlier in the season when the team was struggling. At times it was hard to tangibly see the improvements just even with all the free agent acquisitions. Well, now in this win, win streak and this stretch of games, you can tangibly see the and, improvements and to be fair. Pre American Thanksgiving too. I mean, right. Like we, least we forget, we got off to the really hot start and like, yeah, there was, and Huso was a, a huge part of that. Absolutely. But 
Like, it's not like this is the first good hockey we've seen all year. It, it was, it's, it's, I'm hoping that it's good and solid the rest of the season at the end that, you know, December was just a, a, a dip in, in the season. And what about American awesome. Christmas, though? Right. American Christmas. Yes. As Brian says, that's a throwback. But yeah, Scotty, just a, a real feel good game. Absolutely. From start Dude. to finish. Uh, another win, another two points. You can't, can't get much better than that. They're winning when they should, and they're winning when they shouldn't. And that's the mark of a winning hockey team. And uh, as much as, Find a way. as much flack as we were giving them earlier in the win streak, no flack in this game. Phenomenal Abs- no, performance. That, absolutely. That that's the, the biggest takeaway I have from it is just, there's, there's no, there's no like if, and, or buts, right? Like for we, and that's our job to come up with the if, and, or buts, right? Like that's not a, that, that's not a, a bad thing necessarily, but this game didn't really have any, this was, this was a, a darn good performance and uh, they, they were the better team for a majority of the game and the, their areas of usual weakness, I thought were even strengths at times. And they got a over a one goal, you know, covered the, the, the puck line that we talk about on FanDuel, like co- covered that. So fantastic. Did not hit the over though. You're right. Over. You're right. So, all right, but we'll care. be back with a new episode <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, previewing the game against the Rangers and whatever other news may come out of practice. So stay tuned. Same time. We ball. Same place. How dare you? Any final thoughts? Yeah, we ball. Of all days, you're going to forget to do it today. One word. We're balling the heart.